A few weeks ago, Lewis Rossman talked about 32-bit float in audio recording. I don't have to ever give a shit about anything ever clipping. I pointed out how, how some of the things he said might be inaccurate. I also wrote it on his Reddit page, and we got into a conversation. He stopped responding because as he said I misquoted him when I commented, Recently, I criticized Lewis Rossman's offhand claim that 32-bit float fixes clipping. He didn't point out exactly how I misquoted him in my video. He probably didn't watch it, which is okay. So I don't know exactly what I said that he believes is a misquote, but it doesn't matter. We can use my description of my video, which I wrote on Reddit. Again, I criticized Lewis Rossman's offhand claim that 32-bit float fixes clipping. Okay, here you can see he does say 32-bit float fixes clipping. And we're also going to go over the 32-bit float stuff because I like 32-bit float. 32-bit float is the idea that if you are not clipping the output of your microphone and you do not clip the microphone preamp, that you are essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. It's beautiful. Analog or digital clipping both have nothing to do with bit depth. We go back and forth. I try to keep the conversation focused on 32-bit float, but it ends up with him calling me an absolute psycho. So I'm going to try to redo that first video. To avoid any confusion or over, over misquoting, I will play exactly what he said. And then there are other systems that say they're 32-bit, and I'm sure they're technically recording a 32-bit file, but it's a meme because you're not getting the same thing, which is the whole, the whole point of it is I don't have to ever give a shit about anything ever clipping, which is the, the, the beauty of it. So we're going to test that with some of these systems. Uh, what does he mean by real 32-bit float? What is fake 32-bit float? Whatever you call it, these are two fallacies. First, it is physically impossible to eliminate clipping in any mismatched voltage circuit without creating some form of distortion. Second, unless we have a technology that can predict the future, there can be no technology that makes the gain knob obsolete. I'll get into this later. Lewis says, 32-bit float is the idea that if you're not clipping the output of your microphone and you do not clip the microphone preamp that you essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. Digital clipping happens between line level voltages of one source overwhelming that voltage uh, level the receiver can handle. The idea that anything can prevent that is ludicrous. Again, to do so, the receiver would have to predict every voltage the source sends. It can only keep testing for excessive voltage and do something to limit it, which is why they're called limiters. But all limiters are subject to space and time. There's still a lag between it detects excessive voltage when you can lower its amplification, and there's lag after which the excessive voltage goes away, but the amplifier keeps under amplifying the signal. In short, limiters can't magically prevent clipping. They can only try to minimize ongoing clipping after the fact. Or Lewis might mean the microphone has been subjected to a sound that is so loud it drives a diaphragm to the point where it can no longer vibrate to a sound's changing amplitude. I don't believe he means that because he never references any maximum SPL or sound pressure level of any of the mics he's using. There's a lot wrong in Lewis's statement. Let's start with the and you do not clip the microphone preamp. 32-bit float is the idea that if you are not clipping the output of your microphone and you do not clip the microphone preamp, that you are essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. It's beautiful. There is no and. In a lab, we might talk about a microphone's voltage. In the real world, we only talk about the voltage after it has been pre-amplified. That's why it's called a pre-amplifier, because you can't do anything with the amplifiers until it's pre-amplified. <laughs> the output, output voltage from a microphone is so tiny, it can't be manipulated by electronics. It must always be amplified first, always. There's no microphone voltage um, and preamp voltage. Everyone starts with the preamp voltage as if it is the original microphone voltage. So I will simplify a bit of the first part of what he meant uh, when he said, 32-bit float is the idea that if you're not clipping the output of your microphone, that you're essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. Does that make sense to you? Whatever bit depth we write to, 16-bit or 24-bit, the ADC will only record below the clipping level 
of the preamp. Lewis points this out himself later when he says, even if I do have 32-bit float recorder, I could have a 1,000-bit float recorder. If the microphone preamp or the analog electronics inside the slide them clip, then you're going to have a problem. I agree. Next up, we're going to be doing a review of the Sennheiser's recording capabilities versus the DJI recorder's capabilities. These are both marketed as 32-bit float. Now, the whole meme with 32-bit float is you're just supposed to, you don't set levels, it never clips, it's just perfect, you never have distortion again, and that's complete bullshit. So if my microphone distorts, it doesn't matter if I plug in a 32-bit float recorder. The, if the output from the microphone is clipped, then the recorder is going to record an unclipped, beautiful version of my clipped microphone output, which will sound like shit. Further, even if I do have a 32-bit float recorder, I could have a 1,000-bit float recorder. If the microphone preamp or the analog electronics inside of a clip, then you're going to have a problem. Bit depth alone cannot fix clipping coming out of the microphone preamp. I explained why above. So why does he say again? 32-bit float is the idea that if you're not clipping the output of your microphone, that you're essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. 32-bit float is the idea that if you are not clipping the output of your microphone and you do not clip the microphone preamp, that you are essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. It's beautiful. 32-bit float is not that idea. Even Lewis talks about it as a meme. Anyway, that idea is talk, the, the idea he's talking about is called gain staging. In gain staging, if you don't clip the level of your input, you won't propagate clipped audio down the audio uh, chain if you also don't overwhelm the second stage's circuit. Anytime you send too much voltage, you'll end up clipping, whether the source is clipped or not, as, Lo as Lewis himself points out repeatedly. Now, analog limiters are a type of automatic gain staging but let's go back and simplify what he said again. 32-bit float is the idea that if you're not clipping the output of your microphone, you're essentially never going to have digital clipping and you never have to set levels. As I said in my first video about this, Lewis has unwittingly bought into a nonsensical argument from the manufacturer's marketing department. We've established that uh, what microphone clipping is it's over amplifying the microphone's voltage to a level where the amplifier can no longer create voltages that correspond to changes in microphone input voltage. Some people use the word saturation, like the point where pouring red dye into a birthday cake frosting ceases to make the cake redder. Hopefully we agree about what analog clipping is. But next, what is digital clipping? That's essentially what I questioned Lewis on. What does he mean by digital clipping? You are essentially never going to have digital clipping. And I agree with him about the analog part. I believe he means, and this is the mistake most YouTubers make about 32-bit float, that 24 bits is not enough bits to hold all the voltage changes generated by a microphone preamp. The problem here is that in a lab, sure, you can record voltages from a microphone preamp beyond 24 bits in range, but even the most generous engineers I have talked to say everything beyond 21 bits is pure noise. They've worked as engineers in audio equipment companies and have not been able to amplify and resolve microphone voltages beyond 21 bits. So as Lewis might say himself, it doesn't matter if you record 1,000 bits, 978 bits of it will be noise. If we never digitally clip uh, from a microphone preamp in 24 bits, why would 32 bits change anything? There's a second reason digital clipping is not relevant to microphone recording or any quantization. When Lewis talks about clipping from the wireless microphone's receiver into the camera, he is again talking about a form of gain staging. The voltage coming out of a receiver should not be amplified by the camera's mic and amplifier to the point that it overloads the camera's audio amp circuit. Doing so is user error. It is user error because the Sennheiser and DJI receivers, all receivers, have easily discoverable maximum outputs if they have um, adjustment output voltage, uh, you know, uh, knobs, you know, gain, so you, where you set the level on your camera. If you purposely clip the microphone transmitter, the receiver will output to your camera the maximum voltage it will send. And then you can set the camera's mic in 
amplifier or attenuator, however you want to think about it, to below that maximum level. However, almost every analog input in audio will have a limiter circuit, usually called automatic gain control. You can use that and it will lower the amplification and sometimes raise it as it adjusts the gain depending on the voltage it is receiving. But it cannot do this in absolute real time. It must take time to predict and when it makes changes, they will categorically hurt fidelity. Whether you can hear these drawbacks is another question entirely. Another technology these companies are talking about is dual ADCs. That's just another name for signal processing. When manufacturers say you're capturing both signals, what you're actually doing is creating a composite Franken signal from two distinct paths with different characteristics and hoping the merging algorithm is transparent. A properly designed single ADC path with appropriate gain staging is a single coherent signal chain from start to finish. No switching, no merging, no artifacts from combining different paths. Dual ADC isn't recording the same thing twice for redundancy. It's recording two fundamentally different versions and stitching them together. It is DSP dependent. Whether that stitching is transparent or induces, introduces its own problems is a real question manufacturers don't want to discuss and YouTubers never bring up. Now, I just bought a Zoom F3, so these are tests I hope to do in the future. Anyway, so another argument I hear is that sound is exponential or logarithmic. So it uses the excess dynamic range in 32-bit flow. That's sort of how sound devices does their silly little explanation. And I say, yes, but decibels are how we scale voltages to, ma to match how we perceive sound. The voltages always remain linear. They don't know they're decibels because they're not decibels. They're electron pressure. Again, we scale them as decibels to match our perception. When an electronics engineer like Lewis works on equipment, and he should know this, he would often scale decibel values to linear voltage scale to deal with the spec sheets. Lewis points out a problem he believes the DJI system has. The reason for that is because this is going to clip the analog stage before you get to the 32-bit re float recording. So this is providing you with a 32-bit file, and it is a 32-bit file that's perfectly capturing the clipped analog input stage of this cheap product. The, this, is a, the, yeah, this is a toy. It's a really high quality toy. It, it does a lot of cool shit, but at the end of the day, it is a toy. And the reason I say toy uh, is when, when, you, when you're buying something professional, there are certain things you just don't want to think about. Like if it says 32-bit float recording, I will assume that that means that, oh, you're using the benefits of 32-bit float recording because you're advertising it, which is that I don't have to worry about digital clipping. But in order for that to be a thing, you have to not have analog clipping. And this has analog clipping because the transmitters are, are, don't have the best analog electronics. In. And again, I don't have a right to ask for that for $250. But just to be clear, there's a reason this is a two-channel 32-bit float recorder that costs $300. And this is two channels of, uh, of transmitter, two channels of receiver, and two channels of recorder for $249. The reason for that is because this is going to clip the analog stage before you get to the 32-bit recording. So this is providing you with a 32-bit file. And it is a 32-bit float file that's perfectly capturing the clipped analog input stage of this cheap product. That is speculation without supporting measurements. First, Lewis doesn't know if the DJI mics are physically clipping, reaching their max XBL, or if it's the preamp that is clipping. Generally, it doesn't matter what microphone you use, they will all physically clip if subjected to super loud sound. To test this, he would need to find the mic microphone's max SPL value from the manufacturer and make sure to not uh, make sounds at the site that are beyond the microphone's capacity. He did not do that. He says he's going to do a test comparing DJI to Zoom, but he never does, does the test. Let me repeat that. Lewis makes claims in his video where he, where he promises to do tests to prove them, but never does the test or shows the results to us. And by the way, many YouTubers on this subject do that. Anyway, if someone is driving a DGA mic to physically clip, that doesn't mean it's because DGI is a cheap product. It means the user is using the equipment in a way it is not built to be used. In my experience, the DGI mic 2 is an amazing set of equipment. Now, 
once the analog stage uh, is out of headroom, and I'm just going to sort of sum things up here, the game is over. No amount of bit depth, floating point, or dual ADC magic can restore information that was never captured. So when manufacturers and YouTubers say 32-bit float means you never need to set game, what they really depend on is an analog front end that simply doesn't clip in the real world use. Most don't. Which means a statement is not an audio principle, it's a marketing slogan. What 32-bit float actually gives you is a much larger digital dynamic range after conversion. It lets you raise or lower levels in post-production without adding noise or causing digital clipping inside the recorded file. But this only effect affects what happens after the microphone signal has already passed through the analog stage, capsule, preamp, limiters, and input headroom. If any of those stages clip, distort, or saturate, that damage is baked into the signal long before it ever reaches the ADC.